18 years ago, she was only four years old. But uh, she's grown up in this church, and what a blessing uh, to see her working with uh, Jeremiah. Uh, uh, Ron wasn't the only one when Debbie passed out the, the music sheet. She had, I didn't recognize Katie's name because it said Katrina Markle. And uh, he said, yeah, she's on the list. <laughs> but amen, thank you so much. And what a blessing it's been to work with uh, uh, Jeremiah. Just four more weeks left, and then he'll, uh, he and uh, Katie will be going to Pennsylvania. He'll be a youth pastor there uh, in the church, and uh, she'll be teaching in school. So uh, we're certainly going to miss them and thank the Lord for them. So, if you have your Bibles, if you turn to Genesis chapter 1, Genesis chapter 1, I want to share with you 10 more reasons why I am a creationist. But the good news is, I'm going to only give you two of them. Do I hear amen? Amen. Okay. I'm only going to give you two. I'm going to be brief tonight. We have the Lord's table, and then we have a meeting, and then we need to set up some things. If you could stay around and help us, that would be really great. Even if you're not helping, if you could, uh, the meeting will be uh, very brief. I'll never forget when we went to Highland Park Baptist Church, and for the very first time, I heard Henry Morris speak with uh, in Institute for Creation Research. Hadn't been many years since he and John Whitcomb wrote the book The Genesis Flood, which was a tsunami when it came to creationism and understanding the Bible. If you don't have that book, it's a classic. You ought to get it and read it, The Genesis Flood. Uh, both men have passed on at now, but uh, their book lives on through their teachings and writings. And I'll never forget, as Dr. Robertson had Henry Morris there for a creation seminar, I still have the notes uh, that he spoke there that week at, at Highland Park. I'll never forget a statement that he made, and it stuck with me all of these years, and I hope it will stick with you like it has stuck with me. He made this statement. It takes more faith to believe evolution than it does creationism. It takes more faith to believe evolution than it does creationism. The reason being, all the evidence, if you could call it that, points to creationism. All the fossils, all the evidence that, that men have found, we don't need evidence, but uh, to reaffirm our faith. Because there are so many gaps so many untruths and so many things that just don't make sense. But people still believe it. And aren't the words of Peter so real and alive today when he said that people will be willingly ignorant? Willingly ignorant. It's one thing to be ignorant, but it's another thing to be willingly ignorant. So, if you look in your Bibles, in Genesis 1-1, it says, In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. One of the first verses my children learn as they come up is, of course, Ephesians 6-1, Ephesians 4-32, and then another one is Genesis 1-1. And I can see all of my children, very young, three and four and five years of age, in the beginning... God created the heaven and the earth. And we're going to look at that this week. And we're going to give children the truth of God's Word. And as we heard this morning, that they're going to be scoffers in the last days that will deny the coming of the Lord, deny creation, deny a cataclysm or a flood. They, they don't want to believe it. Even though the evidence, I believe, uh, stands against them. But again, as we see in verse 24, the Bible says, And God said, Let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping thing, and the beast of the earth after his kind. And it was so. 
And God made the beast of the earth after his kind, and cattle after their kind, and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And God said, Let us make man in our image. So tonight, I want to look at this particular verse and this particular truth. In the beginning, God. And God created. But understand, there is a lie that is being propagated, as we've said many times and will continue to say, throughout our society. Our educational system, our courts, our schools, our colleges and universities. That evolution is true. It's a fact. And you, you can see it taking place through millions and even, as we'll see, billions of years. But strangely enough, it's gone from theory to a fact. I have before me uh, this week, he let me borrow it. It's uh, Dr. Darwin's uh, Bible uh, that he's going to use this week. And here's the title of Darwin's book. Most of the time, 99% of the time, we only hear that he wrote The Origin of Species. But could I give you the, tr the whole title of his book? On the origin of species by means of natural selection or the preservation of favored races in the struggle for life. Did you catch that? The book, even by its title, is biased and prejudiced toward certain races in our society. Because evolution says that we evolved through millions and billions of years and that one race is superior than another because that race, uh, or as he would define, or could we say people groups, are more advanced in the evolutionary chain than another group. It's biased already. And as we know what the Bible says, there's only one race, the human race. But could I give you a definition by their own words of evolution? Now, I've tried to make it bigger, but I'll read it for you. Humans and other mammals are descended from shrewd-like creatures that lived more than 150 million years ago. You got that? 150. Mammals, birds, and reptiles, and worms, six hundred million years ago. It goes on. All plants and animals are derived from bacteria. Bet you didn't know that. Like microorganisms that originated more than three billion with a B years ago. That's from the Encyclopedia Britannica. An educational encyclopedia. <clears throat> But I want to share with you tonight ten more reasons why I am a creationist. Now again, I'm only going to give you two, so don't get worried. But each of us have a worldview. A worldview. For instance, I heard Henry Morris say years ago, and his son John Morris, who took over uh, years later, as he said, two people can look at the Grand Canyon, the very same thing, and see it from a different worldview. An evolutionist will stand at the Grand Canyon and look at the Colorado River and say, look what a little bit of water did through millions of years. Carved out these canyons thousands of feet deep. A creationist will walk up and look at the Grand Canyon and say, Look what a whole bunch of water did in Noah's flood and a little bit of time a few thousand years ago. They are each looking at the same evidence, but each look at the evidence from a different worldview. This should be your worldview. All truth is God's truth. And we don't have to worry about digging up something, some fossil, some archaeological find in Egypt. 
We don't have to worry about digging up something that's going to contradict the Bible. In fact, the opposite is true. So I want to share with you just two reasons, and then we're going to close. I'm going to end on dinosaurs. Now, that would be cool, I hope. Uh, so I'm going to end on, on dinosaurs. Just, just two things tonight that uh, helps us believe as creationists that we believe God made the world in literal six days. And on the seventh day, He rested. We don't believe in the gap theory. We don't believe in millions of years. We believe in six literal 24-hour days. Well, the first one of the ten is living fossils. Living fossils. Now, I'm going to explain that in just a moment. But first of all, you need to understand that evolution teaches what? Things are changing. Millions of years, if not billions of years. One article said 600 million, 3 billion. So evolution says that things are changing. Started out as some uh, amoeba, and uh, I'll give the children's version. Maybe you can't see that, but I thought that was cool. That uh, we started out as sponges, and then on the right side we were worms and starfish and sea squirts, whatever that is, and frogs and reptiles and then mammals. But somewhere in the evolutionary chain, uh, the animals kind of were, were all descended together, but they took a turn. And flatworms and roundworms and insects and spiders and, and so forth. But we're all in the evolutionary chain. Now that may be a cartoon, but it is true. That's what they teach. It's fact, they say. Millions. Did you get that? I can't emphasize that enough. Millions of years, change took place. Millions of years, evolution says, change. Now, here's a more educational, more intelligent timeline. Again, you may not can see that. Start off there with a worm and end at the end there with a human. And he's a little bit... You know, doesn't have any sense yet, but he's going to get some sense later. But, uh, but anyway, uh, again, I, I'm being facetious, but uh, this is the gospel truth to some. This is how it all started. Millions of years change. One thing changing into another. So you got that? Okay, so now I want to talk about living fossils. And you say, well, what in the world are living fossils. Living fossils say there is little change. Little change. In fact, things or plants and animals uh, seem to be staying the same. Millions of years? Uh, I don't think so. And in fact, there are often no changes, quote, after millions of years. Now here's uh, Dr. Jehoiakim Shivan, Ph.D. from the University of Munich, has the largest living fossil museum. Now again, you say, well, what is a, a living fossil? Well, we know what a dead fossil is. It's... Uh, covered millions of things that's been laid down by the flood, covered in rock layers all over the earth, and we dig them up and we find them. And we say, this is a fossil. And men put them together and say, this is, you know, what it looked like. And then some men come along, like Buddy Davis of Answers in Genesis, and they put skin on these bones and help us understand what a dinosaur may have looked like and so forth, because we do have some skin impressions of, of dinosaurs. So, but what is a living fossil? In other words, uh, which one is four million years old? They were both found in Florida. Now remember, millions of years old. 
Here's one. And here's another. I think you can maybe see that pretty good. Now remember, millions of years. Can you tell which one's millions of years? Well, most likely because one's kind of in color and the other one's not. But living fossils are proof that, well, things aren't really changing that much. Well, let's see some more. It's not just a, a quirk of a biological finds. Can you tell which one is millions of years old? Anybody? Looks very much similar, does it not? Millions of years old. This one's, or can you tell which one's millions of years old? 300 million, 400 million. You will just pick a number, 600 million. Again, plants. Millions of years old. They seem to be you know, kind of similar to me. Uh, I'm not a scientist. I don't have a PhD. <clears throat> I do have a doctorate, but not a PhD. Okay, how about a uh, horseshoe crab? Can you tell which one is uh, millions of years old? Kind of look very similar, do they not? Living fossils. Well, here's one that is kind of uh, interesting. Uh, I'm going to describe it before I show it to you. Um, because I, I want it to be big enough. In other words, these are leaves that are dead. I'm going to show you a picture of a, of a leaf that is dead. We all find them in our backyards in the fall. Uh, but inside of these leaves are leaf mining moss. The larvae secretes hormones that keeps the leaf fresh. So inside this leaf are these moss that secrete this uh, larvae that, that makes the leaf turn colors, green and yellow. The leaf's dead. So lo and behold, they found one a leaf from Dakota sandstone in Kansas from the Crustaceous period, which is the, one of the dinosaur age. And you maybe can't see the color real good, but it's there. And he pointed us out here. And when it gets a little closer, and mine's more colorful, it's millions of years old. And it looks like the same one. Millions of years old. Well, again, I imagine everybody knows what these are. What are these? Pardon? Okay. Now, let me show you one that's millions of years old. Millions of years old. So, living fossils... Um, kind of goes against the evolutionary idea of that things are changing. In fact, when reality, it doesn't look like much change in some areas. Well, the second reason, and then we'll close. Everybody loves dinosaurs. Now, we don't mean to scare all the kids with all these dinosaurs around and their big mouths. But as Henry Morris used to say, when you're eating leaves or lettuce, it helps to have sharp teeth, doesn't it? You realize that God made the animals on the sixth day and He made dinosaurs. So what does that tell us? Regardless of what Darwin would tell us, that dinosaurs and man lived at the same time. And what is interesting, according to the uh, evolutionary timeline there's supposed to be 65 to 70 million years between dinosaur and man according to evolution dinosaurs and man did not live at the same time but we do know the Bible says they did because God made the dinosaur all the land animals on the sixth day. 
just like he did man. And we believe, as many have said, that Noah took dinosaurs on the ark. And you may laugh and say, oh, pastor, that's ridiculous, this giant um, T-Rex on the ark. Well, maybe he took a baby one. Besides that, again, Henry Morris said many years ago, the average size of a dinosaur is the size of a sheep. We always think about the giant ones, don't we? Oh, but there were scores of little dinosaurs. So, uh, but God says that man was created with the dinosaur, the animals, on the sixth day. So, dinosaurs and man, dinosaurs supposed to have died out 70 million years before man came along. Well, there seems to be evidence, uh, again, when we don't need evidence as believers, but just looking around at what evidence seems to be out there, uh, here is a pre-Inca Indian riding what seems to be a dinosaur. Now, it's just a, an inscription, and uh, it didn't come with a label on it, you understand. You just have to use your eyes and say, that looks like a dinosaur. Here's, uh, again, King George and the dragon. And I've got a whole book in my office on dragons and the uh, Answers in Genesis and ICR. They all have books on dragons and legends of dragons. And even when you read the Bible, you often think about uh, what was the Leviathan in the book of Job, what was the Bohemoth, and the other things that are mentioned uh, in the Bible. So, uh, just going by what you see. Here's uh, a picture that was drawn in the caves in North America. Now, it could have been something else, but again, kind of looks like a dinosaur. Here is an uh, 800-year-old Cambodian temple. This is on the temple post. And... Uh, and many scholars have said it kind of looks like a stegosaurus. Maybe it is, or maybe it's not. But it kind of looks like one to me. And again, here's a picture of a, um, another dinosaur in, uh, on a piece of pottery, uh, several hundred years old. And again, um, Man and dinosaurs, you say, to the evolutionist, that's ridiculous. Dinosaurs died out millions of years ago. But in 1977, off the coast of New Zealand, a Japanese fisherman caught a 30-foot creature that was dead. It weighed some 4,000 pounds. When they dropped it on the ship, it was just coming apart, been in the water, been dead for uh, a long period of time, not millions of years, of course. And uh, so someone took a picture of this huge 4,000-pound creature being drug up out of the sea. Well, uh, dinosaurs and man, you say. Uh, well, again, in uh, one of the books on dinosaurs, the Tomb Tombstone Gazette published a story in April 26, 1890. And here's what it said. A winged monster resembling a huge alligator with an extremely elongated tail and an immense pair of wings was found on the desert between Whetstone and the mountains last Sunday by two ranchers who were returning home from the mountains. The creature was evidently greatly exhausted by a long flight when discovered and was able to fly but a short distance at a time. Now, again, there was no pictures, of course. And some kind of balk at that story. It was just kind of something written to sell papers. Maybe it was. But um, let me tell you a story about uh, going to Brasstown Ball, the highest elevation in Georgia, 4,700 feet. This is the museum that Melanie and I Yes, we hiked up to it. 
That was in my younger days. <laughs> It was amazing when I went into this museum. Uh, now this was a, a, a state park, a museum at the top of the mountain, Brasstown Ball. And uh, they had an enclosure, a glass enclosure, and they had uh, some Indians there, uh, Native Americans. And, um, but in that picture of these Indians in the hillside, they had a story. It was told by the Indians. Now this is in a state park. Of giant birds that would come out of the mountains of here in North Georgia. These giant birds coming out of the mountains and these birds would get sheep and even the little children of the Native Americans. I looked at that and I thought, you know, I... I I mean, I've seen vultures and eagles and condors, but I don't think any of them can pick up a little child or a sheep. So I, I begin to wonder. Well, let me close. I'll close with this uh, picture of a 65, well, let me back it up, 65 million years old. This was the fossil of a colocath that was uh, 65 million years old. Remember? Millions of years old, changed, they've gone extinct. Now this is just one. I, I could show you some more, but I don't have time. So lo and behold, a number of years ago, well, it said 65, but one article I have uh, said it was uh, 300 million, not 65 million. The, uh, lo and behold, they found something off the coast of Madagascar and it turned out to be one of these. And it blew their minds. You know why? You're not supposed to be here. You died out 200 million years ago. And they keep finding gaps in these thing called dinosaurs, are they really gone extinct? Did dinosaurs and man live at the same time? Of course they did. And before the curse, they were just like cats, dogs, and pets, and any other animal. But when the curse came, uh, we see that uh, the lions and tigers and bears began to do bad things and so did the dinosaurs well we could spend a whole evening discussing that but just two reasons that I'm still a creationist living fossils things really don't change seems like after millions of years and dinosaurs uh, did they really exist and do they really exist today Hmm, there seems to be a little bit of evidence that they do. You didn't see this on the front page of the paper, by the way. It was discovered uh, many years ago, but uh, it didn't make the headlines, uh, I assure you. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for the truths of God's Word. Thank you that we can believe the Bible. We can believe that God made this earth in six literal days. And we believe that God made animals on the sixth day He made man. And we believe the Bible to be true. So help us, Lord, to uh, live like it, to believe it, and share the good news even this week. In Jesus' name, amen.